Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and in today's review, we are going to look at an entry level product, and that is the Fozzy Audio K5 Pro. This little thing is a DAC headphone amp preamp and a USB audio interface with a microphone input all in one tiny little package that sells for 80 US dollars. So definitely an entry level piece in here. So we're going to take a look at this today. This was sent to me by Fozzy Audio. They have made no attempt to influence my opinion on this piece. They've also been very patient with me as, I, uh, as it's taken some time to get to this one because I have a lot of stuff in for review. So uh, this one caught my eye for a particular uh, reason when it was sent to me, so we'll talk about that too. And uh, overall, like it's not a perfect unit, but I think it's really solid at $80. So let's do uh, shameless self-promotion and then we'll come back on the other side and I'll tell you why I said all of those things that I just said. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. I have had the wonderful opportunity to review some really high-end gear on this channel, stuff that costs multiple thousands of dollars and sounds really amazing. Uh, but I also like to come back to the entry level and see what's going on there and also like help those who are just starting on their audio journey, um, help them find their starting points, right? And it is that reason, that is one of the reasons why when this piece came along, I was interested in checking it out. There's another reason too, and it has to do with the microphone input on it and that this is really kind of marketed towards a gaming audio audience. Uh, but I think it's also a good bridge device for those who are um, into gaming, but also enjoy listening to high quality music. Let me uh, explain that a little bit further here. So back before I started this YouTube channel, and really before I really even did a whole lot of written reviews in any uh, formal sense, I was on Hi-Fi Guides forum and I started a thread that was just titled something like, what got you into this hobby? Because I was just curious, like why, who are we audiophiles? Why are we here? How did we get into this? And that sort of thing. And I got a lot of responses to that thread. And there were like three consistent themes emerging about how those who were on the forum, at least, and responding to that question, got into this audiophile hobby. One of them was either themselves being a musician or having a family member who was a musician or like some sort of audio person themselves. So it was having a lot of direct experience with music and with audio gear as a kid usually. That, and that was kind of my story that um, often ends up pushing one into the audiophile hobby. The second most popular answer, though, is the one that um, caught my eye or I remembered when this one came along. And that is, I was really surprised by the number of video gamers who ended up getting into audiophile gear because of not only quality audio for gaming purposes and seeking quality audio for gaming purposes, but also just enjoying the original soundtracks to a lot of video games and wanting to enjoy those soundtracks in a higher quality way. Uh, the third reason people got into the hobby was drugs, and I'm just going to leave that one there for now and keep this family friendly. But that whole uh, video game thing kind of being one of the, the gateways into high quality audio uh, stuck with me. And so when this came along and said, hey, uh, you know, K5 Pro mini stereo gaming DAC, and it's got the microphone input on it. I was like, you know what? I do want to check that out, and I want to see if it is a good place for someone who is maybe a gamer first, but enjoys listening to high-quality music or higher-quality music uh, when they're not gaming, okay? Um, is this a good piece for such an audience and like, is it a good starting point for that kind of user getting into the audiophile hobby? So 
With that stage set, let's talk more about the little K5 Pro here. So again, 80 US dollars, 79.99 if you will, on uh, Amazon. I will put a link to where you can buy this on Amazon down below. That will be an affiliate link uh, just to declare that. All right. So the, uh, let's do, go ahead and do a quick uh, unit tour and then we'll talk about decoding options and all of that. So front panel, we already see some interesting stuff on there. We've got both a uh, 3.5 millimeter TRS connection for headphone output and for microphone input over here on your left, okay? And then we've got tone controls for bass and treble right here. And then we have a power and input, a power button, input selector, and a volume control knob here. You push and hold this for power on off. You just push it quickly to switch inputs and then of course you turn it for volume control. Very small compact package here. Let's look at the back. We have the a USB-C connector for the USB audio interfacing. We have two flavors of SPDIF digital audio input with a fiber optic toast link and then an RCA coaxial style. And then we have a set of single ended RCA stereo analog outputs. These are variable outputs. They are connected to the volume control here so it can function as a preamp in that way. I did notice however that plugging in a headphone does not deactivate the uh, back outputs here. They will output together. So if you try to use them together, it will change the sound and put more of a load on the amplifier in here or just on this device period. So keep that in mind if that is of interest to you. Okay, the USB implementation on this is very basic. The USB controller will accept PCM signals up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz sampling rates. Okay, uh, the SPDIF inputs uh, will handle up to 24-bit 192 uh, kilohertz sampling rate audio. There's no DSD decoding on this. There's no MQA or anything like that. It's just basic PCM decoding. The headphone output is specced to uh, do 500 milliwatts of power at a 30 ohm load and 80 milliwatts of power at a 300 ohm load. Okay, um, so I mean that's not fantastic power, but for a device this price that is USB powered, okay, you've got to have the USB plugged in at least to like a wall warp power or something, even if you're going to use SPDIF inputs, okay. Um, it is USB powered off of like a standard 5 volt DC um, connection for USB power. All right, but for a USB powered device, that's okay power output. The uh, USB cable that comes with the device, I mean, it is cheap and basic. We've got USB-C here on the, uh, the, this end that goes in here. But the reason I wanted to show it to you, I thought this was pretty thoughtful. We have a full-size USB-A connector here, but this also is an adapter that you can pull off like that. And then there's a USB-C connector underneath there. I actually really appreciated that they did this here because that offers some compatibility right out of the box because some t laptop devices and all of that have gone to USB-C outputs instead of the USB-A, but then there are still some that use the USB-A. So having both on there, I thought was a helpful addition. So thanks Fozzy Audio for just that, you know, going the little bit extra mile there in terms of ergonomics and usability. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about performance and I'll mention my test gear here briefly. Um, for the most part, I used USB sources on this. It, um, it spent a fair amount of time being connected to my Microsoft Surface Pro 4 laptop, which is running Windows 10. And then here and my at home, it would be it was plugged into my desktop PC, which is a custom built Windows 10 machine, also via USB more often than not. Okay. Um, Headphones used, and I actually have a couple of them here, um, and then some that are not. One of the more common ones was the Austrian Audio Hi X60, which I keep at work um, at my real job because I'm in a cubicle there, so the closed back form factor helps a lot there, and I used this there to drive that a fair amount. Um, but I also tried some other headphones like the Hi Feynman HE400 SE, which I have right here, the uh, Masterop Plus Sennheiser HD58X Jubilee, 
I have here, I tried a little bit the Hi Feynman Ananda Nano, which is right here. I also tried the Masterop Sennheiser HD 6XX to see how that would do. Okay, on their uh, 300 ohm load and so forth. Sources, like other than that, like the files that I would use, um, I did do some just like Spotify listening for background listening here, but then also a lot of it was Ottervana playing local uh, FLAC and DSD files, either lossless or high res FLAC, or streaming lossless or high res FLAC from Kobuz. All right, uh, for the microphone testing on this one, I just used this mic that you see right here clipped to my chest. This is a, a Rode, you know what, I forgot. I'm gonna have to look that up. And I will put a link to this microphone in the description down below too, so you can see that. But it has a TRS connector. And so I tried that on here. And then I did a comparison of that to, uh, I just have a really basic like cable creation. Is that an Amazon brand? I don't know. They sell it on Amazon, but cable creation USB audio interface that takes this mic signal and puts it into my phone, which is doing the recording here. And uh, I uh, found some sentences online that I think were developed by either Harvard or Columbia University or something like that, that are like microphone testing sentences. And then I used Audacity to record from this mic through this device and through the cable creation uh, to test the mic quality. And what I will do here at some point in the review, probably towards the end, is I will uh, just play those clips for you and then you can hear the, the microphone quality from this mic through those two devices. You know, it, YouTube's compression and all of that will be involved, but you can hear that mic quality for yourself here in a little bit. Okay, it's probably worth mentioning <clears throat> that one thing that does not show up on here is a external microphone level control. There are three knobs here with the volume and the tone controls. It may have been nice to have just an extra like microphone gain knob on here. So you do have to control the mic gain through your system settings on whatever device you have this plugged into. So that's something to keep in mind as well. All right, uh, sound here. I'm not going to dwell on it a ton because it is an $80 device, but my takeaway on the sound here is this. It's pretty good for $80, okay? Um, there are a couple of flaws in it, which we'll get to here in a moment, but for the price, it's going to be a significant step up from plugging headphones directly into most like laptop or tablet headphone outputs. Um, it's also going to be a step up generally from plugging a microphone directly into like the analog mic input of a, a computer as well. So it is going to be an improvement there. And so it, it as a entry level device, like are you really going to get a better listening experience moving to something like this than plugging directly into the onboard audio on a lot of devices? Yeah, it's gonna be cleaner than that. It's gonna be quieter than that. It's gonna be more resolving. It's gonna have a little bit more power so you get a little bit more control over the headphone drivers and all of that, which is going to improve the overall listening experience. So that kind of minimum bar that it has to hit for being a product, an entry level you know, audio product there, it clears that bar and does so with a fairly high degree of comfort along the way. Okay, so it is a mostly neutral device. Um, it, uh, there's not a whole lot of emphasis. If you set the tone controls at their 12 o'clock position, anyway, which is mostly just pass through, you get a fairly neutral perceived frequency response. There is decent holography in the spatial presentation. And I think that's what's gonna matter most to gamers. If you need to hear like where footsteps are in competitive FPS games and th those sorts of things, like this is going to be a step up from your onboard audio or from like those, you know, uh, HyperX, you know, USB headphone kind of things. It's going to be an improvement over those provided you get the right kind of headphone to pair with it, which we'll talk more about here in just a moment. Okay, uh, so that's good. As far as music listening goes, like there's a decent amount of low bass impact and dynamics and all that to go with it. The, uh, um, again, the sound stage and the imaging are fairly good for the price and that sort of thing. Uh, the, tone, the timbre and the tonality are reasonably good and all of that. I mean, 
There are some headphones where you're going to get some sharpness and some sibilance in there because, uh, you know, the amplifier chip in it, it just uses like a TI op amp based amplifier chip. Like it is a little sharp sometimes in the treble, um, but not horribly so. And it doesn't show up on every recording and all of that too. So it, decent. Now, I did mention that there are some flaws here. One thing that I notice is that it's not the best at filtering out USB noise. Like even on my Surface Pro 4 laptop, I could hear a little bit of ground loop noise bleeding into the USB signal. Rarely ever was it a problem, and I generally only heard it when like I paused something and stopped it and there was no sound playing. I would just hear a little bit and it was intermittent. It would come and go. But that is a thing that happens, and it's not shocking for a device this, uh, this price, but it also like very rarely ever gets in the way of the listening or the usability experience. The tone controls were a nice addition. Uh, there is usually enough power here with a lot of headphones that you can pump the bass way up before it like starts to distort or anything like that. So if you like to color your sound, like you can use the tone controls there and they seem to work fine. All right, uh, let's see. Let's talk about headphone pairings for a moment. When I get a device in like this, I wanna make sure that it can power these guys. These are, the, again, the Hi-Fi Men HE400 SE, which are currently 109 US dollars. And in my opinion, like this is like the, the starting point into audiophile headphones these days. At 109 US dollars, I think there's a fair, fairly high degree of accessibility with that price, but you also start to get an audiophile experience with these. I have a review for them that I will link to in the description down below. The one issue with them is that they can be a little bit inefficient and demand some power. This little guy actually drives these fairly well, and that was to me like one thing that it needed to do to truly be a bridge product from gaming audio into music enjoyment audio. So again, this handled these pretty well, lots of good dynamic impact and thump and low bass rumble and all of that. It did break up a little bit when I turned the bass uh, tone control knob, you know, down to like three, four o'clock and then turn the volume way up. Then I could hear these distort in the bass, but uh, just even maxing out the volume and keeping the, uh, the bass knob at its 12 o'clock or neutral position handled these just fine. I think the Sen HD 58X is like not quite as good as the HE 400 SE all around, but it is easier to drive. And so this guy handled these with a plum as well. So these are also an excellent like starting point audiophile headphone that is uh, these, this little amp DAC handles well. And I think that is really good too. It did a pretty solid job with the Ananda Nano, which is a fairly efficient and easy to drive, but still full size planar magnetic headphone. That pairing sounded reasonably okay to go with it. As far as driving the 300 ohm HD 6XX, there you did, I did start to hear the limitations as to what this is capable of. And that is of no surprise. Like it just didn't really handle the low end on the HD 6XX very well and uh, just kind of made it sound a little bit thin and, and that sort of thing. So I think that's probably, you're not gonna wanna put 300 ohm loads on this, but that's okay, because there are plenty of other options in there that are pretty good. A quick comparison to make would be with the iFi Uno, this little guy right here, which is also an 80 US dollar, like audio file starter DAC amp kind of thing. Um, sonically, I don't want to go all through the ins and outs of these two things because they're both very good for 80 US dollars and an improvement over most onboard audio solutions on most electronic devices. Okay, um, so like in terms of features, this only has USB audio input on it, right? Um, it also has a wider range of uh, where this one has uh, SPDIF on it, I should say, like uh, in addition to the USB. This one also does not have a microphone interface, okay? And as far as like equalization goes, it has three equalizer presets plus no equalization. So four equalizer presets basically on it. It will decode DSD and MQA and that sort of thing. So it's a little bit more flexible in that way. 
Okay, but this one has the tone controls, which gives you a bit more, um, arguably a bit more control over the sound color that you like. Has, again, the other input types on it, has the microphone input and all of that, but again, its decoding options are a bit stripped down. I think the Fozzie is just a little bit more powerful from its headphone output than the Uno is as well. Like, I thought that the Fozzie handled the HE400 SE with a little bit more authority and started distorting, you know, at louder volumes than this one was capable of. All of that. So I think both of these are really excellent starting points, but I think if you're a gamer, the microphone input on the Fozzy, it might be the difference maker for you, particularly if you're into competitive gaming where you're talking through a microphone and that sort of thing. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there in terms of the sound review. Um, I'll go ahead and probably drop in that microphone comparison right here. Okay, real quick, this is the little USB audio interface that I use for the audio on my channel here. And you're not hearing it right now just because I'm using my phone speaker so that I can hold this up. It's USB-C on this end, and then it has a microphone input and headphone output right here. This is like a $13, $14 thing uh, that I just bought off of Amazon. So this is what I'm going to be comparing the Fozzy Audio's mic input to here in just a moment. Ever since I started using this with the little Rode mic that, again, I will link to in down below in the description as well, no one has complained about the audio on this channel. So, I mean, it does a pretty solid job and it can serve as a baseline to compare the Fozzy to. The small pup gnawed a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. Read verse out loud for pleasure. The small pup gnawed a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. Read verse out loud for pleasure. All right, so now that we've heard that microphone comparison, let's wrap this up eighty dollars not perfect you know but it's not going to be for eighty dollars but it's really solid at eighty bucks and i think for someone who is primarily a gamer and is just starting to explore audiophile grade um sound outside of gaming and all of that this really is a good piece and you know it's got an attractive price to it an attractive feature set i think and it's got pretty good performance at 80 dollars to boot so well done fozzy audio this is a really strong entry point for the right kind of user all right i am wave theory thanks for watching please remember to leave a like if you haven't comment to the uh, comment down below if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel, check out my PayPal, my Patreon, and just generally do those things you do to support YouTube channels. So thanks again for watching and enjoy the music.